for scene one takes us back to the very beginning. Back to where we saw those witches and they were creating a spell. I want you to know that for an Elizabethan audience, that scene, act one, scene one, and this scene, act four, scene one, would scare the life out of them. Anytime witches were together and they were charming and come bringing up a spell, this is a scene that would cause great fear on their part. This particular scene is one that has been emulated or copied throughout literature ever since this. Shakespeare was the original, not with the Three Weird Sisters as I've explained earlier because that comes from mythology, but for these lines that he's made so famous as they're charming this particular, or building up this charm. Thrice the rind the cat hath mewed, thrice and once the hedge pig whine, Harpier cries, tis time, tis time, round about the cauldron go, in the poison entrails throw, toad that under cold stone days and nights has thirty-one, sweltered venom sleeping got, boil thou first in the charmed pot. And all together, these lines that you hear over and over, I don't care if you're watching a Bugs Bunny cartoon, if there's witches, this is what they say, double, double, toil and trouble, Fire burn and cauldron bubble. Filet of a finny snake. These are things that they're putting into the pot. All these things. A snake coming in and filet and all these terrible eye of newt. All of these things they're throwing in to this awful, awful pot. Filet of a finny snake in the cauldron boil and bake. Eye of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog, adder's fork and blind worm's sting, lizard's leg and howlet's wing, for a charm of powerful trouble like a hell broth, boil and bubble, double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, scale of dragon, tooth of wolf, witch's mummy maw and gulf of the ravened sock sea shark, Root of hemlock digged in the dark, liver of blaspheming Jew, gall of goat and slips of yew, slivered in the moon's eclipse, nose of Turk and Tartar's lips, finger of a birth strangled babe, ditch delivered by a drab, make the gruel thick and slab, add thereto a tiger's chaudron for the ingredients of our cauldron. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Cool it with a baboon's blood, then the charm is firm and good. Love playing those witches. So Hecate comes in at this point and she says, good. Good job, that's what I told you to do, that's what I wanted you to do, and that's where we're going to go. They dance, they sing, um, and then Hecate leaves. The second witch says, bye the pricking of my thumbs. This has been a also oft repeated phrase. And they would uh, this was a belief that if you felt like an itch in your thumb, that meant that something bad was on the way. And so when she says by the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Uh, notice again. I pointed this out over and over that when something is said like that, watch who enters next. And that something wicked, guess who is coming in? And it is Macbeth. Macbeth comes in and he says, What are you doing? What is it you do? And they say, A deed without a name. We cannot tell you. Watch these witches speak in riddles. Hecate had told them to be uh, confusing to him. And indeed, they are going to be very confusing him. Now look what Macbeth says to them. I conjure you by that which you profess, however you come to know it, answer me. So by that same thing that you profess, which would be Satan, uh, your hellish connection, I conjure you by that same thing. You can't out-Satan me. He says, I want you to tell me what you know. Though you untie the winds and let them fight, though you have this power, I command you. Now look how bold Macbeth has, has become. When he first met these witches, he was totally awed by them, didn't know whether to even believe them. He's now at the point as, as he's stepped in so far in blood and gone oh so far into the dark side that he's willing to command the witches and tell them what to do. And so he does that. You answer me at the end of that speech. He says, answer me to what I ask. And they say, speak. 
Demand. We'll answer. Well, of course they will. That's why they're there. Of course they're going to answer. Um, now, the first which says, would you rather hear it from us? Or from our masters. Of course, their masters would be those spirits. And he, Macbeth says, call them. I want to see them. I'm, I want to go above your head. Call them. I want to see them. And so they do. At this point, then, we have some different things that show up. These are now apparitions. And these apparitions are ghost-like things that uh, create... Let's go and create a new page for these apparitions. So, um, when they come in, the first one is an armed head. So, this is like a head of armor, which has, you know, these openings, but it is an armored head, maybe a slit for the mouth. But this is uh, not a very good drawing, but it is an armor, a head of armor, like a helmet. And that armored head speaks. Um, Macbeth wants to hear from him, and, um, and he says, speak. He says, Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Notice it's always three times. Um, this one says, beware, Macduff. Beware the Thane of Fife. Now, Macbeth says, that's good. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, that's, that's a caution that I was already concerned, but I've got a question, and, it's, and they say, don't ask him anymore. You only get one shot at these apparitions. Um, and the next one is coming in is more potent or more powerful, powerful than the first. The next one comes up. It is a bloody child. Now, let me see if I can draw a little child. This is a little child. Now, sorry, but oh, see, here's his little, like a little sleeper thing. And, um, oh, no. It's, it's bleeding green. This is a bloody child. This is apparition number two. This was apparition number one. Apparition number one. Apparition number two is a bloody child, and um, it comes up and it says again, Macbeth, 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 those three times. And he goes, Well, you don't have to say it three times. If I had three years, I'd hear you. Just say it once. Now, this one says, Be bloody, see, bloody, be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man, for none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. So the bloody child says, no one born of woman, no one born from a woman, can harm you. Well, this pleases Macbeth because um, he, just like with the first one where he says, well, okay, I, you know, I was, uh, I was afraid, uh, I thought that was right about Macduff. Um, I was, you know, that, that seems right to me. I was already concerned about him. This one saying, uh, no one born from woman can harm you. Oh, that's good news because, of course, everybody's born from a woman. And so that means that I'm not going to be harmed. But he says, so well then, since that's the case, we'll live Macduff. You may as well live. Uh, what need I fear of thee, he says. But then he says, but yet I'll make assurance double sure. We see double over and over in this play, and then we saw it again with the witches. I'll take a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live, that I may tell pale-hearted fear it lies in sleep in spite of thunder. So he had decided uh, over here not to kill Macduff. Um, he, this confirms that. But then he says, no, I'd better be sure. Macduff, you're going to be out of here. So uh, that's his plan. Now that body count you know now is Duncan, two guards, Banquo, um, and now he's planning on killing Macduff. Then the third apparition comes up. This third apparition, we'll just extend that page. The third apparition is a child crowned
and this this child that looks like an old man sorry this particular child is holding a tree branch We'll just put a few little leaves on that. Give it a little reality. So this is the third apparition. And this is a child holding a tree branch. This child says, he says, what is this that rises like the issue of a king and wears upon his baby brow the round and top of sovereignty? So it is a baby. Let's give him a rounder face. Now he looks like a child with a beard. Sorry about that. Um, and so um, this one, he, they all say, uh, don't talk to these apparitions. Macbeth, he's had to be told over and over again. He's very stubborn and very bold in his approach. This one says, be lion metal, proud, and take no care who chafes, who frets, or where conspirers are. Macbeth shall never vanquished be until great Burnham Wood to high Dunsinane Hill shall come against him. So this one, what it says, is that until the forest, which is below the castle, this would be Burnham Wood. We would say Burnham Woods, but it is Burnham Wood. And there really is Burnham Wood in Scotland. You can go there to this day. Until Burnham Wood marches up the hill to Dunsinane. This is the castle where Macbeth will be preparing for battle. Uh, you all will not be harmed. Now, that's, again, good news for Macbeth because he says, well, that will never happen. Trees can't uproot themselves and march up a hill. So I am in good shape. All of this has been really good news for me. I am satisfied. I like this um, this thing. He says, but I, 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 I want to know one more thing. He says, yet my heart throbs to know one thing. Tell me, if your art can tell so much, shall Banquo's issue, his children, ever reign in this kingdom? Will they be kings? They say you don't want to know. Seek to know no more. He says, I will be satisfied. Deny me this and an eternal curse fall on you. Wow, Macbeth now is cursing the witches? Really? Uh, let me know. And then why sinks that cauldron? So this cauldron that, that was there now sinks below. And the, a, a new image, a new um, apparition is coming up. And um, they all call on it. Each witch says, show, show, show. And then this apparition comes forward.